Developing software is different from developing tangible goods, so it must be measured differently. The tasks that developers do from day to day is different, so we can't directly measure productivity in any meaningful or normalized way. So what do we do? Here are seven strategies for measuring software development. Let's dive in. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein. I often advise teams not to measure velocity because it can send the wrong message and give management the wrong goals. Velocity can be raised at the expense of quality, which is a mistake. Here are seven strategies for measuring value in software development. Number one, measure time to value. And this is my most important metric. We produce software to fulfill some need or desire. And the time from when we start creating something to when we create something that is valuable in the hands of our user is time to value. It's a good measure of our effectiveness because it measures the entire development process. Local optimizations are meaningless if they don't help optimize the whole process. Measuring time to value keeps us focused on the big picture, something worthy of measuring. Number two, measure time spent coding. Developers love to develop, but things get in our way. Ironically, the time spent assuring quality in many organizations robs teams of valuable time that they could have used to actually create quality. I know developers who spend less than 10% of their time developing. The rest of their time is spent in meetings, reports, that may not be contributing to the bottom line. A good development process is one where developers spend most of their time actually developing software. Number three, measure defect density. Most organizations track bugs, but this can have an adverse effect of increasing bug tolerances. Defects in code are often a symptom of a deeper cause, a defect in the development process. If defects are constantly showing up in production code, it means that the development process may be broken. Look for the root cause and try to fix it. Defect density, that is bugs per thousand lines of code, is one of the few measures that can be compared across teams with caution. So it can be used for process calibration. Number four, measure time to detect defects. It's been shown that the cost of fixing a defect increases exponentially as the time elapsed since the defect was created. The cheapest defects to fix are the ones that are detected and fixed immediately. Finding defects faster not only decreases the cost of fixing them, but also helps developers become aware of things they may be doing that allow the defects to be created in the first place. Number five, measure customer value of features. Not all features are equally valuable to customers. In fact, nearly half of all features created in software are never ever used. We order our backlog so that the highest value features are created first, which lets the less important features get put off or even dropped. This gives us more time to focus on those higher value items. If you're unsure of what features will provide the most value, then ask your customer. If your customer isn't sure what they want, then give them something that they don't want, and you'll likely see them very quickly get clear on exactly what they do want. Number six, measure cost of not delivering features. We often look at the value of delivering features, but sometimes the cost of not delivering a feature is the most compelling reason for building it. Ask your stakeholders how much the feature is worth and how much not having the feature will cost. The answer may surprise you. And number seven, measure efficiency of feedback loops. The most powerful point of leverage for increasing efficiency is often in the process itself. A good development process has built-in feedback loops that can be used to tweak the process. The faster the feedback, the more efficient we can become. Find ways to fail fast and learn from failure. This is how teams rapidly improve. Most teams who try to measure productivity end up sacrificing quality. 
Measuring productivity may not be possible and can certainly be disruptive. Instead, focus on producing and measuring value, both in the product delivered and in the process used to create it. If you found this video valuable, then please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.